The question is, well, how do you customize that ICL? How do you figure out the right sizing of the ICL for each person's eye? There's many different ways of doing this. There's multiple, what are called biometers or anterior segment imaging devices that image the entire front part of the eye. And a lot of times the external measurements of the eye alone can be used to figure out what's the right size of ICL to use for a patient's eyes. Here in my practice, we go one step further. We actually have a very modern ultrasound that we use in tandem with AI and algorithms to give us a prediction in terms of how each diameter ICL would sit in a patient's eyes. And so before we even go to surgery, we often have a very good feel of what's the right ICL that a patient should have in their eyes. And a lot of that just comes not just from experience, but also because of all the devices we use to measure a patient's eyes, there's a lot of redundancy in measurements. And so if you just go off of one data point, well, what if that data points off a little bit? Then there can be maybe some variability in how someone heals. But if you're getting multiple data points and all those data points are consistent, and all of that data is fed into an algorithm, especially with the help of AI now, now we can get a pretty darn accurate sense of how someone's ICLs are gonna sit in their eyes immediately after surgery. Are there outliers? Sure, but oftentimes those outliers are so minimal that it doesn't require addressing after surgery. It doesn't require either sizing up or sizing down in the size of an ICL because the modern form of the ICL known as Evo ICL, it's so much more forgiving when it comes to ICL sizing compared to previous versions of technology that have been used in decades past. It's typically not something that we worry about. 